Holy shnikes, the NFL free agency period has been wild. In this episode, we're going to let you know what it all means from a fantasy football perspective. Buckle up, it's the IBT podcast coming right at you. Because I've been in tune, out of touch, coming off the bench, trying to shake the funk, check your stat line, see who's up, that over, under, hit too clutch. And I'm trying to avoid getting carried away with the jet sweet sleeping on a trick play, predicting all of my moves like AC never replay, so I'm running it back, head down, get out of my way, and it's for the law with only one thing to do, I guess I'll say a prayer and put it all on the line for you with they all. Just one thing to say, yeah, what they don't know. Something they haven't seen. I'm off that mean Joe Green. It got me fading between. Yeah, I got it. And I got it. The In Between Fantasy Football Podcast. All right, all right, all right. It is Tuesday, March 12th, 2024, and we are in the effing thick of it. A new NFL league year has begun, and with us comes NFL free agency. We're going to chat all about it tonight and what it means for fantasy football leagues. My name is Seth Wilcock, and shit, man, I'm just grateful to be here with all you wonderful people tonight, living out the dream, and uh, I'm doing it with amazing people like the man to my left, your right. Uh, he's a mentor, a friend, someone I just consider the Dom DeSandro of this company and program in general, the founder of Pros with Joes, the founder of Green Screens Media, Eric Romoff. Eric, how we feeling as we uh, approach what's been a crazy uh, day and, and a crazy week, and we're kind of on the other side of it, I think, now? I mean, we might be on the other side of it, but technically it hasn't even started, right? Like we're not even yeah. – we're not even really in free agency yet, right? We're just in the tampering period. So uh, much like the NFL salary cap, the free agency window is completely made up and teams can do whatever they want, whenever they want, which means that there is a ton of news for us to catch up on this week. Yeah, but more more than usual. We got like we got a huge list. For I was sure. like, we, we're gonna have to move quickly through everything to get in for you. Uh, we're also joined by another guy who joins us frequently here on the program. Uh, certainly been chatted about a lot, whether it's been in the comments, uh, bearing him for his JJ McCarthy loves. Or uh, my family and friends saying, who's the new guy on the show with some frosted tips and some different eccentric outfits? Uh, guys, he's our cleanup batter. The guy who isn't afraid to take some big swings towards the fences. Nick Hoover, a.k.a. Hoove. Hoove, how are we doing tonight, my friend? Yo, what up, people of the internet? People of the world? It's your boy, Hoove. Oh, this has been the last crazy few days so bear with me i'm trying to recollect my energy we'll give it back to you tonight but all right how you doing everybody it's your boy who dude i i feel you man i i was not expecting it to be this wild like i i don't think we had quite the, the star players moving that we've had in in previous years but it's been like Still top 50, top 75 fantasy football players on the move. So we're going to break it all down for you tonight. We're going to start with front and center, let you know these free agency moves and the fantasy relevance with it. And then we're going to do some good news, bring you some feel-good headlines of the week. Eric Romos' favorite segment. I know that for sure. Um, and we're also joined by the IBT family. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. Looks like we got Albert already to rock and roll with oh, us. Man. What's up, Albert? So good to see you, man. Thanks for making us part of your Tuesday. Uh, if you guys want to come hang out with us in person, drink a couple beers couple whiskeys hang out on the porch consume some other things uh hey draft night out is just around the corner it's this august at the fantasy football expo at the pro football hall of fame village at the brew kettle more specifically we're gonna be vibing out there who um i know it's like what six months away four months away five i don't know what it is but i'm i can't stop thinking about it i am I, i'm way too excited about that like I keep telling, I keep talking about it with Heidi every weekend. I'm like, all right, babe, like when we go on, like I'm just, I'm really excited about if you, you meet this person, this person, this person, and then I just like talk about it way too much, and then she's like, all right, I'm excited, but take it down in the level. I'm like, yeah. once you're there, you'll you'll understand, you'll understand, but 
Uh, it's a good time. If, if you're not planning on going out, I strongly uh, could, I hope you consider changing your mind because it is yeah. an absolute blast. 200 plus people in a bar vibing out with music and just libations to the max, man. It's all good stuff. And Eric, we're working on some pretty big things in general here at IBT. Like definitely stir the draw season or stir the straw season right now here at the company. Yeah, for sure, right? Like we're 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 tracking the the NFL front offices, making some moves and setting themselves up for the future, and we're we're trying to do our absolute best impersonation of that on the IBT side, right? Yeah. So definitely stoked about our second year at the helm of Draft Night Out and have some big stuff planned around that, but also just trying to expand what is the IBT universe, right? So make sure you are rocking with us. We know that you have been forever. We appreciate all the day ones out there, and we have some big milestones in front of us in the not too distant future. Absolutely, absolutely. We're going for a thousand subscribers by the draft. That's also the the uh, Dover race. We're going to be out there covering that for for the NASCAR scene. Looks like we got Rachel in the chat speaking one of our day ones. No. I love Rachel. She's no. one of the the best examples of like people we fuck with. And like Rachel was someone who just loved consuming our content. And then we were like, dude, like you're super talented as well. Like, why don't you come create content with us? And she has been, she's been doing some prize pick stuff. She did an entertainment article last week for her. She's been killing it. So uh, that's what I love about this community that we're building over here, guys. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it though. We got a busy packed slate for you uh, and let's kick it off with front and center. Sometimes taking that first step out the door is the hardest Front and center, man. That one gets me pumped every single time. And we got some new drops in the work right now. And it might be some of the best yeah, tunes we, we've put out yet. So excited for it. Looks like we got the Fantasy Football Advice Network, one of our day one what sponsors out here. What's up? Good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. I imagine that's Tyler over there. We appreciate you and your whole crew, man. Uh, let's talk quarterbacks, guys, because uh, the big name, he did get moved. Uh, there was some speculation a couple weeks ago. Uh, one of our favorite insiders from the great state of West Virginia was taking a couple swings and saying, hey, Kirk Cousins might be going to Atlanta. He's checking on Skulls. He's checking on houses down there. He's checking on Kyle Pitts' number. It came to fruition after six years in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins heads down to Atlanta. He joins Zach Robinson as the play caller. Kind of remains in that same like Mick Shanahan tree, if you want to call it that. And uh, it's been pretty good for him so far. He's had two really good seasons under Kevin O'Connell. Didn't finish this last season, but still three QB1 seasons in Minnesota. Uh, was on a, on pace for a fourth this year. And always been a reliable back-end QB1, uh, early QB2. And how do we feel that this shakes out for him specifically, Eric? Uh, before we get to his pass catchers, what do you think Cousins is? Like still in that QB12 range? Because he's like fucking quarterback 18 right now in underdogs. And I'm just eating him up every time I get can get him. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a lot more of the same with, with Kirk Cousins, right? Like he's going to be like a high volume uh, passer of the football and has the weapons around him to be able to be very effective when it when, in terms of accumulating uh, scoring stats, right? You know, getting those passing touchdowns that are hard to come by. So I, I don't know if we'll see if we'll see him really flash in any given week, right? Like you mentioned him as a best ball target. I think there's value there. I don't know if he has like the week over week upside to be a QB one, two, three in scoring in any given week, but he'll absolutely compile a QB one season when it's all said and done. So got to take advantage of the value and, and you love that he's stepping into a pretty familiar sister system to him. And who specifically these pass catchers, I think we'll all get a little bit of a bump. We've been waiting for the coming mm -hmm. Of Kyle Pitts, it hasn't happened so far. If you were burned his rookie year, you might have gone back here in the sophomore year and then his third year, and it just never really happened. And I've also always been a little bit of a, a sketchy doubter on Drake London until like this last year when we saw him go for like 181. I was like, all right, this guy is fucking great. I just got lucky. Like, 
I picked a Garrett Wilson over him in a lot of dynasty drafts, and it kind of just came to fruition early. But it looks like Drake London could be a top 36 player this season, Hoof. I'd go higher. Because I like just looking at it, okay. Let me ask you, like, let me let me throw a few examples out there. Sure. You tell me, you tell me them or yeah, Drake yeah. London, okay? I love this team, yeah. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Not, not even thinking about that one. Yeah. Too high. Chris Olave. I think about Chris that Olave. one. I'm always I'm always down on Olave though. I'm just not a Derek Carr guy. New offense though. New offense there. Carmichael's gone though. So that that'd be tough. What else you got? Give me another one. Let's go Jordan Addison. Oh, there's not even the same That's range. Long, yeah. George Pickens now with Deontay gone. Deontay gone. Oh, uh, I think they'll draft I'm a wide receiver. London. Yeah. Lund- okay. I, I would so just like underneath, honestly, I think I think I take London over over Wilson. Truthfully. Okay. Okay. I think that I think he's the top of that tier right now, and I think that he's like wide receiver fifteen. Fifteen in that range. In that I, range. Like I really, I really like this for Kirk. I really like this for this offense. Do I think that from a football perspective that they're gonna be like a big winning team? No, but I think that they are gonna have a lot of growing pains. But fantasy wise, I'm gonna get a lot of targets and Bijan. I'm gonna get a lot of not Kyle Pitts. I I don't know. I just I really can't do it. Um, it, but Drake London at the right price. I'm I'm locked in on on London. How do you feel about it, Eric? Are you in it at Drake London current price tag? Even before this, he was going right around 33 overall on underdog. So still kind of a, a as a late third round pick. Maybe this moves him up into the mid third rounds. Do you think there's wide receiver one upside for London? Yeah, I think that upside's there, right? Like he's got the pedigree. Um, you know, he's he's flashed uh, plenty of upside in a limited slash dif- dysfunctional offense so far in his young career, right? So like, I, I think he he definitely has that on the you know the the high end of his range in terms of his price tag. I would really love it if he stays right around here, right around thirty overall. Right. Um, I I think that that does represent some pretty good value. I'm, Certainly. I wouldn't feel great about clicking the button at like 15, 18 or so. I, yeah. I, can see, I can see plenty of worlds where he gets steamed up to that price tag. And that'll probably be the point where I start to fade him a little bit. But anything from that like 25 to 35 range, I would feel very good about adding him to my roster at that price tag. I mean, when you think about it too, guys, we've just gotten great seasons out of wide receivers from Kirk Cousins. Even before Justin Jefferson becoming the, yeah. the wide receiver one, Stephon Diggs had a couple of breakout seasons under him uh, before ultimately going to Buffalo. It was a little shaky at the end there, um, but Adam Thielen was that dog. You know what I mean? Twenty what? 2018, 2019 Adam Thielen. Like it, it did not get any better than that. So uh, looks like in the chat here, Rachel, she is a Vikings fan, I believe. She's shown a little bit of uh, love for a guy, Kirk Cousins. She's probably you get, heartbroken you get on Sam that. Sam Darnold is a consolation prize. <laughs> Oh, I think sorry. I'm. A, I think I'm going to be starting a lot of leagues this year with Amonra, Drake London in my wide receiver room. That's just how I feel. Okay. If I can get if I can get London, London as my wide receiver two and have like that alpha as my one, I would, I'm going to feel really good about a lot of drafts. I, I love how you daydream about having what was it? What would that be like? The 107 or 108 yeah. pick? Like it's such a random draft spot. <laughs> I'm about it. I I I, I want to yeah. I want to go second round for London, but you know third round at that price I could probably consider it. But I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, looks like we we got blue eighty fantasy football saying who've given the heat. Yeah, yeah. who yeah, they love it or they hate it. Like I I'll give my hot takes. Who's hot takes right here? How you Look, doing? He's sipping that hot tea, that Cracker Barrel fucking mug. It, oh yeah, you this love Cracker Barrel too. You're, I love Cracker Barrel. You're a simp barrel. for Cracker Barrel, my friend. You're a it's simp good. for Cracker Barrel. How many places can you go that like actually have a really good gift shop, like Cracker Barrel, or like how many places can you go that they have like farm equipment just hanging from the ceiling? Like I like a little danger when I eat my pancakes, you know. <laughs> well, but yeah, that's besides the point, you know. Hey, uh, ooh, they honestly, they clean those things. Yeah, shout out Cracker Barrel. I never worked at a Cracker Barrel, but I worked at a Dutch Pantry, which was kind of like the the backwoods Pennsylvania version of it. And I had some damn good times there, Wait, Eric. Had some damn there's, good a, times. there's a more backwoods version of Cracker Barrel out there. Oh, yeah. 
There's a Paul Bunyan in uh, the Wisconsin Dells that's pretty backwards like that too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was it's definitely solid, a solid breakfast. That uh, that peg game fucks me up all the time. Oh. Never do I feel never do I feel lower <laughs> on my own intelligence than trying to hop those pegs over each other. <laughs> YouTube tutorials, my friend. YouTube tutorials. Nah, dude. I'm just trying to go off the dome. Yeah, yeah, no one's got time for that. Shout out Cracker Barrel, though, and the Dutch Pantry. We miss you. We miss you. We need you. a sponsor. Uh, Baker Mayfield remains a Buccaneer, netting a three-year, $100 million deal for our guy Baker. To me, it's status quo. I don't think much has changed here for, for me, fellas. Uh, Mike Evans, wide receiver, 1980p on underdog. I'm smashing that. He was a wide receiver one last year. Chris Godwin, wide receiver, 40 on underdog. I'll take that. You know, I, I I don't I think he still lacks a little bit of upside, especially in the half PPR format. But Baker Mayfield's a story, boys. He's QB 24 right now on under, underdog. This guy won me a chip in my biggest league ever. Got me twelve hundred dollars payout. Like, but even more than that, I just wanted to win this league so bad. My boy Baker did it. Like, how can you not take Baker right now at the end of your drafts? In in redraft or dynasty, how are we feeling? Let's let's focus the question here oh, before redraft, we get in. Redraft, answer. redraft, yeah, yep. Primarily, redraft. I'm all in. Redraft. I can't believe that the price is that low. But like, you also have to have to consider that there are so many quarterbacks that outperformed their ADPs For last sure. year. You got people like Jordan Love, even Gardner Minshew, like was a pro pro bowler because a lot of people opted out. But I mean, he's gonna probably be starting with the Raiders. Like, I'm pretty sure that May that Mayfield's higher than that, but. A lot of quarterbacks outperform their ADP, so I understand why he could have fallen down that list. But hey, at this price, why not pay up? So go out there, get get some shares of Baker Mayfield and redraft for sure. Anything changed for you, Eric? I think this is still an offense I don't mind being a part of. And a lot of Kate Otten hype over, over the offseason already. I'm hearing from the Buccaneers. So maybe this is an offense to once again be invested in. Yeah, I mean, at, at that price, right? Like, you have to feel okay about it. You know, Baker Mayfield, I think he finished as QB 10 or 11 overall. Yeah. A lot of that was just being available, right? Like, being you look healthy, at his, yeah. his, yeah. his fantasy points per game, and he's closer to, like, a QB, you know, back-end QB 2 than he is a, a back-end QB 1. But, I mean, look, like, it it seemed pretty apparent that when the Buccaneers went out and, and retained Mike Evans that they were going to try to run it back with what proved to be a pretty – you know, pretty successful formula overall, right? So, like, you know, if, if you're looking for, um, you know, the the kind of safe, quote-unquote, safe play, if you take, like, a safe and upside draft strategy to quarterback, I think Baker Mayfield absolutely checks that box. Love it. Love it. Uh, we, we got Blue 80 Fantasy in the in the chat saying, better times in the roof at the Expo with the IBT family. Listen, dog, you want to see peak living? You want to yeah, see, like... Dude. I can't stop smiling when I'm at the expo and especially on that rooftop. I mean, don't that get me wrong that, that, you know, talk about day couple, ones, couple, yeah, a couple vitamins, a couple things being passed around. They're definitely helping that smile. But, uh, in general, I drank a bush light up there. Okay. That's how, that's how dirty it goes Passing down. We drink them lotties. bushes up there. Yeah. Fucking drink them netty lights. Yeah. Tyler had a whole, uh, whole, uh, cooler full of, uh, like like all these all these nice beers up there and then you know i'm I'm just passing around the bush lattes to the kids so um uh let's talk russell wilson russell wilson is gonna join my pittsburgh steelers uh 1.2 million dollar deal for russell wilson the danger witch it's coming to the berg baby maybe they'll put on a, a make it a little permani danger rich posh possibly hey. get that slog get those fries right on the sammy there um but uh, honestly man like i feel very mixed about this as a steelers fan it kind of closed the door on the kenny pickett chapter in my eyes a little bit and at the same time potentially i think limits our ceiling you, you know you're not winning a, a super bowl with russell wilson but from a fantasy perspective listen we've had like 24 touchdowns in the last two years russell wilson had 26 and a handful of games last year so it's not the worst thing Subsequently here, the Steelers, they move old uh, stone hands. Deontay Johnson trade to the Carolina Panthers here. So uh, let, let's start with uh, with Eric. Eric, you've given give me a lot of dirty looks over here uh, about my shade on on Russ and, and the Steelers. How, do you think it makes them a Super Bowl team? Like, what are you talking about over here? I mean, I'm just I'm scowling at you as I learn the perspective of the of the Steeler fan, right? Like, I mean, this is my... a journalist. No, uh, non-biased here non-biased non -biased? Okay. Non -biased. okay 
Um, look, from, from my from my point of view, like anything that you can do to expedite the uh, the end of the Kenny Pickett experiment is a good thing, right? Like just kind of like dragging out these sort of like middling quarterback type of realities is is never good for for an NFL team, right? Like you need to know that you either yeah. have a guy or you don't have a guy, and you can then act accordingly. So I I don't know if if russ is necessarily the guy i do think you can say he's like objectively an upgrade to kenny pickett and this is a team that routinely outperforms their expectations and it's always quarterback play that drags them down right so like mm-hmm. i wouldn't say they're a favorite by any means to you know win a super bowl but they are certainly much closer today than they were yesterday or prior to this signing and the the fact that you get it on a very team friendly deal allows you to go out and acquire guys like Patrick Queen with all the money that you're yes, saving, right? Like, that was so awesome. I, I think this that is a, a this yeah. is a huge win for the Steelers. Obviously, they still play in a very tough AFC conference, but nonetheless, ready. like the, I'm ready the, now. the horizon is brighter today in Pittsburgh than it was last week. Yeah, I totally I totally discounted that we just went out and got Patrick Queen. When I saw that notification today, he stole him from like, me for like twenty five yeah. bucks more. Yeah, and he specifically had a little bit of a vendetta against the Steelers because Mike Tomlin at one point called him, "Hey, you're not a Raven yet because because you've been beating the Steelers." And uh, yeah, so so really cool cool about that. And Hoove, I know you've been working on Hoove's mock draft 3.0 over there. Steelers they deal Deontay Johnson here right now on their receiving core is George Pickens, of course, Calvin Austin the third, Miles Boykin, Mark Denzel Mims. Uh, Callaway, Denzel, Denzel Fitzpatrick, like it's a pretty bad group here. Uh, who do you have potentially? Are you changing anything? Are the Steelers going to be attacking a wide receiver in the first round, second round? What are your thoughts? Um, it seemed like they they kind of prioritized defense at this point. Didn't they go after a cornerback too? Yeah, they got a. They actually got a uh, Dante Jackson and, and a six round pick for Deontay Johnson there. Eric, you know cornerbacks better than I do. I know the Panthers had a pretty good secondary last year. Is Dante Jackson pretty good? I'd say he's about league average, right? Okay. Um, serviceable. Le- hey, league the average. Way that I put it, right? So, Hell yeah. Um, you know, he he kind of got tossed into the fire when uh, when J.C. Horn went uh, went down early in the season and became part okay. of that like platoon. Um, so he, you know. He he showed his ass a couple of times as he was getting used to the the speed of the NFL game, and then you know got a little bit more sure footed as the season went on. Okay, uh, how about this? I got an idea because yeah, we, we know how Pittsburgh is is that their wide receiver you is that they just know how to develop wide receivers better than any organization out there. So they're probably not going to burn a first rounder on a wide receiver, even though there's so many talented ones in this. Yeah, draft. yeah. Yeah. So let so we can we can cut out the Brian Thomases, we can cut out the even the Lad McConkeys, but what about like someone like like Ricky Purcell? I, that was the first name that came to my mind too. Because because yeah. him replacing like Kelvin Austin, I like that a lot. So Ricky Purcell maybe in the third round or something like that. Yeah, maybe I, second round. I would second. I wouldn't even mind a slot receiver too, if we can get like I know Purcell is kind of inside outside wide receiver. Um, we need someone to kind of play the slot a little bit now. George Pickens will kind of go all over the formation, but I am excited to see w- what can happen there, Hoove. And I, I think you're probably dead on. Maybe expect them to go after maybe even two day two wide receivers. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they use both their second and third round pick on a receiver in this class to get someone. Eric, is there a name that jumps off the page to you that you think the Steelers should go out and acquire for this wide receiver room, whether it's through the draft or free agency? Like Tyler Boyd's still out there. He's a Pittsburgh guy. I thought maybe Boyd Mm. could come back. Um, I don't think the answer is free agency, right? Uh, We will talk about some of these mid receivers getting huge contracts in free agency because there is nobody out there, right? So, I don't think you need to go out and overpay in free agency to to bring in a wide receiver. And I also don't think you need to spend a ton of draft capital on a wide receiver this year specifically, right? Like if you're not talking about one of those big three receivers, and this is kind of my my analysis for any NFL front office, if you're not talking about, about the big three, by all means, wait till the second, the third round. There is so much talent in this incoming rookie class. Like there's no need to, to send out first round capital on a wide receiver. A Malachi Corley, Roman Wilson, something like that would even be really great for the Steelers. Yeah. So Mitchell um, can be sitting in there in the second round. There's there's a lot of guys that they can they can tack on on the, on the cheap. 
Absolutely. I would put my stamp of approval on Roman Wilson to the Steelers. That would be pretty raw. That'd okay. Sick, yeah. That's my stamp of approval. That's, right right. that's the point, right? There's so many guys out there. That, that you would be pretty team. raw. It, Eric, is this a bump for Deontay at all? Like, I know he was kind of just like, I have way too much exposure to him in best ball just because where he's going in drafts, he's going like seventh, eighth round turn. And I've just been sitting there. I don't think he has a ton of upside, but he's going to have a shit ton of garbage time. Brian Burns on the move. Like the Carolina Panthers, we'll talk about it later. This is a garbage ass franchise. Yeah. Com- complete poverty <laughs> franchise are, are the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Um, I, I guess if you're, if you're buying into the value of Deontay Johnson, you're, you're, you're buying into the decline of Adam Thielen, right? Um, obviously he is fairly long in the tooth. So if you think that he finally starts showing his age, you know, a lot of the ways that they used Adam Thielen last year are ways that they can use Deontay Johnson this year. Um, so I, I think it's more so, you know, kind of answering the question about, you know, how you feel about how Thielen projects into the upcoming yeah. season. And if you're worried at all, then, then Deontay Johnson is certainly going to be the next man up there. Awesome. Awesome. Um, all right, let's go to Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew out in Las Vegas, man. He seems like a Vegas guy personally. Um, you know, I, I think he'll definitely be enjoying the desert out there. And uh, hey, they got a couple shops out there that I visited when I was out there for the draft. I think he will really enjoy Planet 13 was one of them. So I, I think a lot of fun out there. Um, but two years, 25 million for, for the kid. Uh, we know who he is. Targets his wide receiver one heavily. DJ Chark had a freaking wide receiver one season with him early in his career. Thanks to Gardner Minshew. Michael Pittman, really good down the stretch with Minshew as well. Um, is, is this good enough for their stopgap quarterback here in Las Vegas, Hoof? For me, I really the money threw me off. Is I really like the I really like the pick, but to me, it really kind of opens my eyes that maybe Antonio Pierce is really more in on Aiden O'Connell than we want to admit as fantasy analysts. So if you guys want to go out there and throw a third round pick at Aiden O'Connell just to see if they if he beats him, I'll just say it. Because money wise, he's just like a little a little bit more than Taylor Heineke was last year. And we all knew what Taylor Heineke's role yeah, was going to be. Of course. As a bridge quarterback. And Taylor Heineke ended up starting. So I don't know. If Aiden O'Connell is as good as people like Sean Payton and Antonio Pierce, people that know quarterbacks are saying he is. I don't know. I could see them not going after a quarterback or even going after someone like a like a um like a Spencer Rattler. I could see them really waiting on to like the third round and going after a Spencer Rattler and giving it a three person quarterback race between Rattler, Minshew, and, and O'Connell. So I, I really don't think that they're going to go after a, a high profile quarterback right now after seeing, after paying Minch of the money. Eric, wide receiver 12 right now for Devontae Adams. Er, late second round. Are you paying that price for him right now in best balls? I'm probably not. Um, you know, we're, we're just, we're just peppering the people with aging wide receiver talk so far to start the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, I mean, like, he he is uh, he's had a phenomenal career and he's been able to be very productive much deeper into his career than most wide receivers are. But typically when that I mean, when that cliff comes, it is rowdy. Right. So you are you are taking a ton of risk that this is the year where we start to see. That yeah. Decline. Yeah. And you're yeah. you're kind of you're kind of paying for close to his ceiling performance while you're taking on that risk. So I, I think he's also a player that will see his ADP fall a good like eight to 12 picks between now and, and draft season. Spot on, spot on, spot on. Uh, let's talk Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold. He's joining Minnesota on a one year, $10 million deal. And listen, Sam Darnold is definitely better than what we've seen the past, a uh, couple quarterbacks here, but after Kirk cousins got hurt, I mean, he's better than the past or not. He's better than Nick Mullins. Uh, Sam Darnold can throw a ball pretty nicely still though. I'm not worried about Justin Jefferson. I think he'll still be a wide receiver one, and I think he's still worth his his first round draft capital. Jordan Addison is who I'm concerned about, folks. Wide receiver 36 after Cousins went down. He's right at that ADP on underdog wide receiver 35. Eric, is that enough for you to get down on him, knowing it's Darnold right now, or do you think uh, just the allure of a possible rookie quarterback makes you want to go up and uh, get someone like Jordan Addison, thinking uh, that that rookie gunslinger can maybe put him over the top? 
Yeah, I I have to say I'm I'm pretty bearish on on Jordan Addison, right? A lot of his productivity last year was touchdown dependent, which is very hard to replicate year over year. And then you add to it that Kirk Cousins, who just loves to throw, is heading out the door. Um, I I guess I'm not as sold on Sam Darnold as it sounds like as it sounds like you are. But whether it's Sam Darnold, whether it's a rookie quarterback, like I think we I think we see this Vikings offense. Take a take a pretty dramatic shift heading into the the 2024 season, right? Like, you know, we'll we'll talk about Aaron Jones a little bit later. I think we're going to see a much slower pace, much more balanced attack, and that pass volume is only going to further, or the decrease in pass volume is only going to further drag down Addison's productivity. So, I'm not touching him in the in the mid 30s where he's going now. Okay. Okay. Um, in, in some lighter news here, Mac Jones he is moved for a six round pick to Jacksonville. And Jacoby Brissett yeah. returns to New England on a one-year, $8 million deal. Who does this signal to you they're going quarterback at number three, or are they trading out? They're going quarterback, but I think that they're really they're really hoping that Jaden Daniels falls. Busts think, them at yeah. three. Yeah, let's, let, let, let's talk a little bit about that r- right now. I want to talk about some of the backup quarterbacks. Jameis Winston goes to the Browns. He's going to back up Deshaun. Watson, he put out on Twitter, God's calling him to do that. Um, as much as he thinks he's a starter, God's calling him to lead men up up there in Cleveland. So shout out to Jameis for being that guy once again. Uh, letting the Lord speak to him and lead him. Drew Locke Preach. going to the Giants. Uh, interesting move there. Mitchell Trubisky back to Buffalo. Marcus Mariota to Washington, who, though, I think that's the tea leave. I think that's the tea leave that... If Washington's going out and getting uh, another backup here in Mariota, that's more of a mobile quarterback. Are they going Jaden Daniels here and going to build a system around him? Maybe try to move off uh, potentially uh, Hal, who's already in the building? Or they're going after a former first-round quarterback to, to get him in the quarterback room to help someone if they decide to move up for Caleb Williams to reunite the Cliff Kingsbury. I don't know. I think that that's that's what I'd keep my eye on out of the Marcus Mariota situation is that they're they're replacing Jacoby Brissett with Marcus Mariota in that quarterback room, and they really could be trading Sam Sam Howell could get traded before Justin Fields. Keep in mind that. Yeah. So Marcus Mariota could just be the backup quarterback in Washington next year. So I would keep my eye on that. I think that there's a really good chance that they trade up to one and grab Caleb Williams still. Eric, I know it's pretty early for, for the betting markets right now, but if you had to lay something down on Daniels going second, would you right now? I think now, like the closer we get, the, the less that, that that market and those odds are going to shrink. Now might be the best time if you want to get on that future. Yeah, if if you are inclined to believe that, I think now is certainly the time. Um, because as, are you as we get closer and closer. I am inclined. Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, okay. I, I tend to err on the side of Occam's razor. What is the most simple and straightforward answer is typically the one that ends up being the answer. I think I think Mariota signals that they're looking at uh, at more of a mobile quarterback, kind of like they did with him in Philadelphia the prior the year prior. Right. So, yeah. 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 Um, you know, that that's the most likely outcome in my mind um, after the that I would say I would almost say it's more likely that if they're going to trade with Chicago, they end up getting Fields than the uh, the absolute haul they would have to ship off to to get Caleb Williams. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I got a weekend planned next month. I'm going to go down down to Maryland. I'm going to see my buddy Herms, who uh, works for Draft Sharks here. He's been a frequent guest here. We're going to post up at a bar. We're going to place uh, our NFL yeah. draft props together. So excited for that because that's going to be so much fun. Yeah, in Pennsylvania, you can't do it. Can't can't bet on the draft. So that's a bummer. Um, all right, we're going to running backs. Josh Jacobs shocks the world. Packers four years, forty eight million dollars. Wow, did not see this one coming. Two RB1 seasons, an RB3 overall finish in 2022 with the Raiders. How high will his ADP be now uh, that that Matt LaFleur is going to be calling the shots for this running back? Matt LaFleur usually gets the most out of his running backs if they have any talent. Late first, early second, is that what we're feeling, boys? Does that sound right? I mean, Josh Jacobs was going down, like like mid-50s in in underdogs, 54.6. Where does he go now, Eric? I think he's going to fall right in like weird second round range for running backs that we see 
every year, right? The the, the guys that are there after the teams that are going to anchor uh, with a with a top uh, or an elite option at the position, and yeah. he'll be there, you know, just kind of staring him in the face. Maybe they want to, you know, they they want to hammer running back and go RB RB like it's 2007 again. Um, but but realistically, like I I think more than anything, what what advantageous for uh, for Josh Jacobs here is that he's probably going to be the the only man standing in this backfield, right? Obviously, yeah. Aaron Jones is out of the way. Sounds like Dylan is going to be heading out of town. I I think that is more uh, telling of any sort of upside that um, that Jacobs has than you know any sort of fit in the scheme. He's actually kind of a weird fit in the scheme. He's more of a power runner. Um, you know the uh, the OC there in uh, in Green Bay is part of that that San Francisco tree, right? So um, you know I, I, we'll we'll see how he fits into the the zone blocking scheme, right? This is the the snake that bit me with Damian Pierce last year, trying to trying to force a power runner yeah. into that zone scheme. But I mean, if if he's if he walks in and gets all of that volume, you got to feel pretty good about him as like a fringy RB one, you know, kind of top tier RB two. Who are the vibes palpable right now uh, 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 up in the Green Bay area? It's probably mixed because Aaron Jones, a loved guy, wanted to retire a Packer. He's now. Mm-hmm. I, you know, at the arch nemesis, Minnesota Vikings, but Josh Jacobs, a fresher, a younger, uh, and you know, just more durable running back. I think at this point in his career, it's a lot of confusion up here in Wisconsin. I'll tell you that like they, people are excited for Josh Jacobs, but they're also angry at Aaron Jones, but they understand why he went there. You know, it's, it's like, like they were mad about Greg Jennings leaving and going to the Vikings. There's so many people like the NFC North, like there's no rivalries deep down. Like, like you almost have a rivalry for the team that drafted you eventually, not the mm-hmm. team that you like are competing against in your rookie contract, like just because they're your arch arch rival, like in your in your division. So, um, for Josh Jacobs, though, like if I can grab him in the second round, that's what we need to be looking at. It kind of depends on how you view the Packers overall this next season. Like, if you view them as the second best team in the NFC, like they proved that they were when they were when they were beating my Niners you know, for three quarters of the, of the, of the, um, the playoffs. So if you add Josh Jacobs into a playoff team, like you're adding Joe Mixon into the Texans and you are excited about that, you have to be smashing Josh Jacobs in the second round. Okay. All right. And then Aaron Jones, like, I think he's still going to be probably in that fourth, fifth round range, which is probably where he deserves to go, just given the the injury history. Ty Chandler is a nice little black back. They got him under contract. Uh, I, I don't know if we'll ever see. They also have a couple of rookies uh, stashed away right now in their practice squad. So we'll see what they do. But um, definitely a, a game changer up there. And, and the Packers are going to be good, man. The Packers are going to be good. I, I look for the win total bets to come out and potentially smash the Packers. I got on, on the over last year. I was thankful for that. I got in for them making the playoffs. Um, so I hopefully they, they can do that again. Um, probably the biggest running back news, though. He's coming home. He's coming home. Tell the world he's coming home. Saquon Barkley, mother effers, is coming back to the great state of Pennsylvania. And uh, looks like the Eagles. They're going to fight fire with fire here against the 49ers. And uh, the chosen one, he's back. And I think I was talking to Katie about it last night. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be the next generation of great Eagles. In my opinion, we just lost Fletcher Cox. They just lost Jason Kelsey. I think Saquon Barkley is going to be who this team needs. And I think he's going to be a leader with Jalen Hurts. Jalen's got to step up now here. Um, He's got to be the voice of this team without Kelsey on it. Um, So four RB one seasons on a points per game basis in six years for Saquon. He brings that to the Eagles. However, it's been a while since we've seen that like total ceiling from Saquon. He he scored over a hundred points more in 2018 than any other season of his career. But Eric, that was also when OBJ was on the team to stretch the field. Is this the perfect setup for Saquon Barkley now that he's in a high power offense uh, with a dynamic quarterback, or does it hurt him because Hertz is so dynamic, doesn't throw to the backs a ton, and uh, the tush push? It's still very much legal at this point. Yeah, the, the latter is where uh, is the camp that I I reside in, right? Um, you know, certainly the most talented running back that the Eagles have had in in several years, but the the circumstance is just is just weird, right? Like 
Um, you know, you, you mentioned his his peak season in 2018 with OBJ. I mean, you can say that there is a far more capable field stretcher, or arguably two, with AJ Brown and Devonta Smith right, running right, down the sidelines. Right, right. That's why I want I want to get excited. Yeah. But the the way that so forever and ever, the way that Philadelphia has used their running backs has always left us scratching our heads, right? Like they'll always end up with these like three or four man committees. I think we're still going to see plenty of other guys in the rotation. Maybe not quite as much, right? I think Saquon will get a bigger piece of the pie. We didn't see but it last the day, year either, though. We didn't see it last year that much. I mean, th- there was there was definitely a split in that in that backfield last year, right? It wasn't like the five man rotation of, of yeah. years past. Yeah. But he's he's not going to come in and get you know eighty percent opportunity share in that backfield. And even if he Good. does get the vast majority of the work, we're just going to watch him stand on the sideline and push Jalen Hurts from behind as, as he, as he takes maybe all they... those one yard goal goal line carries, right? Like they're 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 not going to change that that part of the the system as long as it's it's continuing to work. So what if it doesn't work equity, though? just plummets. What if it doesn't work anymore? Because A, they got Jalen Hurts banged up last year. So maybe they want to do less of the tush push. And also B, they don't have Kelsey who is the main cog in that play. So Obviously, like he picked his successor, and I, I, I think whoever steps in there, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but um, I, I think he'll do a good job. But, but still, like, I, I think there's a shit ton of upside for Saquon, who, but it's probably the scariest uh, pick you can make right now. He's got a twenty point six ADP, and that's only going to rise up now that he's in the city of brotherly love and Rocky City, baby. You know what this reminds me of is like when the Ravens. Well, this is a fresh topic just because Derrick Henry went there. We'll talk about it later. But like when the Ravens invested so much into J.K. Dobbins because they want they wanted to transition away from from Lamar running so much and they wanted to split the carry a little bit. And and now you're seeing after J.K. Dobbins not paying off that they're like, all right, we should have just went out and, and got a Derrick Henry. And that's what they're writing. They're wrong this time. I think that there's that the Eagles are seeing the same thing happening yep. to their team and I'm they're. I'm and they're you. changing it right away. They're like, we're going to go out. We're going to go get, even if it's a division rival, we're, we know that Saquon Barkley is up there with the Christian McCaffrey's of the world. Like, we can compete with the Niners with yeah. the running back like that. We can compete with with the best of the best, you know. And you got to think about it. You got, even though he's not as great as he once was, I ain't as good as I once, once was. was. Austin Eckler. Over there, you got a few, yeah, yeah, a few running backs in this, uh, in this division that are pretty good. So, I mean, we got to see on who ends up in in Dallas, but I don't know. Saquon is looking like he's easily going to be the best running back once again in the NFC East, just for a different team. Yeah, and like this is the definition for the Giants: like play stupid games and and win stupid prizes. Like that's pretty much what it feels like here uh, with them with, with Saquon just hopping the bridge here, heading back to the great state of Pennsylvania. Shout out Philly! I, I'm a new Eastern Pennsylvania person. I I was born and raised in Western PA, and I'll always be a Steelers fan, baby. Don't you fucking forget it. However. Philly ain't bad. Philly ain't bad. I got my buddy Jesse up there. Real Philly motherfucker. Real Philly motherfucker. And uh, he took me a little, nice little uh, l- little hoagie spot here over the weekend little, or, or uh, over the yeah. summer. It was fantastic. It was the best Philly cheesesteak I've ever had in Philly. No no doubt about it. Uh, what's your best Philly cheesesteak, Eric? I know you frequent the, the, the city of brotherly love as well. Oh, man. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even give it a name, right? Like all of the good ones that I've had are just like – little mom and pop kind of corner sandwich joints, okay. right? Like okay. anyone that's trying to tell you like is Pat's or Gino's is just flatly lying to you. It's Angelo's. That's, that's... It's Angelo's. Sure. Yeah. Um, it, it, the art of the Philly cheesesteak is, is not, is not overly sophisticated to master. Right. So like anyone who makes a living cutting the sandwich in in the city of Philadelphia, they can make you a pretty mean cheesesteak. Yeah. I got I got the best Philly cheesesteak I ever get I ever had from this pizza shop called Domino's. I mean, and, and it was it was amazing. It was so good. In Wisconsin, yeah, Domino's. Oh, we we gotta get you out. We gotta get you out to Philly sometime. Who we gotta get you out out to Pennsylvania? You get a real one. Yeah, hell yeah, man. All right. Well, Saquon, I'll be taking the shot. I I think at that ADP, if it stays similar, um, we took that shot in our best ball live draft here on the channel a couple weeks ago. I think I would still make that move. 
Um, but excited to see what happens. I, I know a couple people aren't as high on Saquon, and there's definitely question marks to be answered. And his uh, the guy, the guy who was holding down the seat for him, uh, leaves, goes to Chicago. DeAndre Swift out out of Philly into the Windy City. Three years, twenty four million. I hate to say it, folks, and I was saying it a couple weeks ago too. The time to move Roshan Johnson was then. It ain't now. There's nothing left for this guy. I think they want to take the shot on the former quarterback. He was a fun story. Roshan Johnson's dead, folks. Khalil Herbert had a nice little stretch at the end of the year. Got you excited. He's all shit. I think one of us even threw him out. It was like potential sleeper for 2024. It's all dead now. It's all dead now, Hoob. It's over. It's over. I love how the Bears chose Swift over Montgomery and the Lions chose Montgomery over Swift. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah nfc north running backs man they just like to switch they have no loyalty they just they just swift they flip flop that's what it is man no well, loyalty and they prioritize and this was the first signing of free agency like they weren't fucking around they had yeah. on their list get, get deandre swift. swift like i don't know what else was on that free agency list but at the top of it it was get deandre swift is this guy gonna be a fucking weapon is this guy gonna be a fucking weapon out here in this new offense I'm just so glad that I traded Roshan Johnson for the 206 and AJ Dillon, who AJ Dillon could be the next Dallas no, Cowboys RB1. Nice. nice. So Let's that go. could be that could be a great trade, but go on. Okay. Here, here's a good point from Tyler saying it's not dead since when can Swift hold an actual workload. You're definitely right, Tyler. And I I've kind of projected it last season. We were seeing a, a lot of the Swift breakout early in the year, but we kind of saw him decline towards the end of the season, Eric. So there will be other opportunity here, but it kind of kills the upside for anyone else here. What do you make of this? Where do you have Swift right now, uh, per se, in your rankings? Would you be interested in him on underdog? I think he's going right around uh, the running back 30 right now, is 31. Would you be interested in that? Uh, I think you can make a case for RB 30 or 31, right? Uh, the, the, real, the real thing about Swift going to, to Chicago is that um, it just it com it completely gunks up the works once more, right? Like I think we're still going to see Roshan Johnson getting some work, um, whether yeah. it's Khalil Herbert or another running back. I think we're going to see a third head to this Hydra in the backfield, right? So like, you know, the the hope was that no one else came in and that we would see one of the, the you know the these two ancillary pieces emerge. Yeah. Now that you know that that Not likelihood is is significantly hindered. Um, you know. DeAndre Swift, when he's able to stay healthy and is at, at 100%, um, you know, still is shown to be a fairly dynamic runner in, in this league. But, I mean, the ability to stay healthy is a legitimately open question with him, right? Whether it's missing time or just being kind of nicked up and not having that that second gear to, to drop into. So, yeah, I, I think we're looking at, you know, maybe like a 60, 62% opportunity share in favor of DeAndre Swift out of that that backfield but okay there's there's no way that he creeps up to 70 70 percent plus i want to piggyback off of what eric said with the with the injury thing is that when you look at deandre swift's career like this is easily the worst offensive line he's played behind when you have the lions for his whole rookie career and then with the eagles now yeah great two point. really good offensive great lines point. great point. so so his ability to stay healthy behind that offensive line like we could be looking at the 2024 miles sanders people so i would stay away Okay. There is an opportunity for Roshan, but everyone else <laughs> to do not be taking stabs at Deontay Foreman, people. Okay, he's done. I don't even know if he's still with the team. Um, yeah, cautionary to tale told there by Hoove. I like it. I like the warning shot. I think you might be onto something there. Derrick Henry to Baltimore. Two-year, $16 million deal here. It's tough to kind of know what this means specifically, Eric, because like I think in the Todd Munkin system, it's a lot different than what it would have been in the Greg Roman system a couple of years ago, where it would have been, you know, hey, let's let's feed Derrick Henry 25 times a game. Um, they still got Justice Hill there. Keaton Mitchell could be back midseason as well. So they got some other, you know, ancillary pieces there. Um, overall, though, like where is Derrick Henry for you? Is he a locked and loaded RB2, you think? I wouldn't say locked and loaded. No. Um, I mean, look wow. like across, across Derek Henry, across Keaton Mitchell, across Lamar Jackson, right? Like there are going to be plenty of guys that are splitting up the workload in that backfield. 
I mean, the 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 sort of ceiling for Derrick Henry this this year is like what LeGarrette Blunt did in New England that one year, mm-hmm. where he just by default got all of the the short yardage touchdowns, and I th- I think he pushed for ten that year, right? So like, well, what Gus you know, have can, last year like fucking twelve? Gus had a shit ton. Yeah, ex- exactly right. So like, yeah, you know, he can he, he can definitely get there, but relying on on touchdowns for a guy that is probably going to cost you a, you know, mid to late second round pick is that's a, that's a dicey proposition, you know? Yeah. If, if his ADP, like right now, like it's hard to think what his redraft ADP is. I think it'll probably like get back into the second round. Like right now on underdog, he is fifth round, but like, you got to think like, that's that's pushing all the running backs down so far on that platform. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that changes the the next time they refresh their ADP with the with the post free free agency yeah. update. You know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So so I I definitely see him going up. And um, like last year, I traded Derrick Henry and was happy to get a, get away from him, despite like him still having 13 touchdowns. It was kind of like you said, it was like it was ups and downs. And I think we could get the same thing here in Baltimore. Uh, who? Any final thoughts on on the Ravens here as we close the book there? I think that what you're looking at the Ravens backfield this year is that you're looking at a little kind of, a little mix of the Lions backfield is you have David Montgomery plus with it with Derrick Henry and you have Jameer Gibbs minus in Keaton Mitchell. And I'm going to be grabbing a lot of shares of Keaton Mitchell. Let me tell you, because they're going to be so focused on Lamar and Derrick Henry running the ball that when you give the ball to Keaton Mitchell and he blasts mm-hmm. you, Woo, that's going to be, those are going to be some awesome mm-hmm. highlights of Keaton Mitchell. So best ball, grab as much Keaton Great Mitchell as you can. Off. Yes. Grab Keaton Mitchell, trade for Keaton Mitchell, go yeah. get him. All right. So I want to answer this question from Brad and we can do it by talking about our next player and, and transaction here. Uh, Brad asking is Zach Moss and Drake London, good targets in fantasy drafts this year. Now we talked about Drake London in qu- quite a bit of length earlier in the episode, Brad. So after we're done being live here, I, I encourage you to go back and check that out. Uh, we'll tag that tomorrow so you can find it quickly if you'd like to. Um, but listen, with Zach Moss here signing a two year deal in Cincinnati, uh, very, very kind of surprising move here. I think we all thought Joe Mixon could potentially be out of the fold. Um, but since he gets a seventh rounder for Joe Mixon and Zach Moss, who, man, like he was kind of a workhorse there for the Colts for a while, getting 30 plus touches, getting a, what, almost 100% opportunity share, a couple games there. It was absolutely wild. But I like Chase Brown. I think the dude's a rocket. I think the dude's a freak. We saw it at the NFL Combine. We saw it in spurts last season down the line chase chase brown is a freak so i think it kind of convolutes things here in cincy but moss still has probably rb2 upside and eric am i bullish by saying i think that one of these two cincy running backs whether it's chase brown or moss i'm not sure which one yet they could be a league winner in this lethal fucking offense yeah, especially if uh, if that uncertainty, if if fantasy managers are are positing that same question, and in turn it drags down both of their ADPs, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely nice upside there. It's it's not like Zach Moss got you know uh, otherworldly money, right? Like you know he he kind of got like like secondary piece plus type of contract. So they didn't exactly back up the Brinks truck. There isn't anything that you can really glean from. The type of contract that that they gave him mm-hmm. in terms of their intention. The the real question is, you know, and, and it's, it's a question that we posed with uh, guys like Keaton Mitchell last year, right? Like, is someone with Chase Brown's frame going to be able to hold up, you know, to a a workhorse back type of workload? I, I think the answer is is to be determined. And so, in turn, you're probably looking at a couple of guys that are that are going to be splitting a fair amount of these touches. But yeah, I mean shout out to Zach Moss. Like he was kind of an afterthought in, in terms oh, I of thought making he was his way to Indianapolis. And yeah. he, he made the most of his opportunity. He, he earned this contract. I'm sure he's very happy to be cashing an $8 million check. I just don't know if it's like the biggest vote of confidence that the, yeah. the Bengals could have given him. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. And yeah, I thought Zach Moss sucked. Honestly, I, I was, I like Zach Moss as a rookie. I had him a couple places, won me a little bit of money back in 2020. And then, afterwards just kind of wasn't a factor after his rookie season um but yeah shout out to zach moss joe mixon to the texans who how do you feel about that from a fantasy football angle are you in on joe mixon well another trade that i'm going to bring up i just traded uh brian robinson and a bunch of picks 
basically for Joe for Joe Mixon. I traded Brian Robinson for Joe Mixon in a sense. And so like I'm loving that trade right now. You got Brian Robinson competing with Austin Eckler and Joe Mixon being a solidified RB1 over in Houston and Houston being a playoff team. Like I was saying about Josh Jacobs, you got to be buying those running back teams in playoff or running backs on playoff teams. So yeah. Yeah. I'm all in. I'm all in on Joe Mixon. I think that he's easily going to be a top 12 running back this year. So RB1 smash. All right. So you're a little higher than like right now. He was kind of going down towards that like back end RB2. I think that ADP will move up being on the Texans and hey I, I I think there's a lot of upside with Joe Mixon here I think it's a, probably the best landing spot he could he could honestly have Eric what do you think you're a Texans guy yeah very very much so especially after they they let Devin Singletary walk right like we saw them try to shoehorn Damian Pierce into that zone running scheme and it just clearly didn't work because it rarely does when you when you do that with a power runner so now we, you know, we we get a guy in Joe Mixon who's shown a ton of versatility over the course of his career. Um, you know, he, he's coming from a, a Zach Taylor system, which is much more aligned with what what Bobby Slowick wants to do in Houston. So good fit. I mean, he should have the lion's share of the opportunity there. Um, you know, you can worry about the age a little bit. You know, he he fell off to four yards per carry last season, not exactly mm-hmm. lighting the world on fire. But if he's if he's getting that volume. And, you know, he is the kind of counterbalance to, uh, you know, to keep things a little bit more level in the offense that should be pretty prolific. Like there's there's a world where Mixon gets up into double digit touchdowns and sees, you know, 70, 75 percent of the opportunities in that backfield. Andrea in the chat saying hi, everyone. Good to see you, Andrea. Hope you're having Andrea. a great Tuesday night here uh, amidst all the NFL free agency news. Tony Pollard. Heads to Tennessee on a three-year, $24 million deal. And could I make a case that Ty J. Spears is the biggest loser in fantasy football right now Jeez. after this news? RB18 ADP on underdog is what people were paying. Uh, seventh round. That's a seventh round pick people are spending on Spears. I still think both of these running backs have some upside in this offense. Um, I think Callahan's going to fix that offensive line, but still a lot of question marks and doesn't make you want to go really near any any one of these guys and like i'll just take the probably the better value which will be spears but like i'm still not pumped and i love ty j spears that was my little darling last last dynasty draft season i traded ty j spears for Rasheed rice midseason so i'm loving it right now Ooh. i feel i feel like this is a great trade crystal ball on that one that was a great one so um this hurts for him and Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard obviously showed last year that he can't hold the workload. So I don't think that there's there's no hope for Ty J Spears, but there is an opportunity for Tony Pollard just to just to show out. And then once again, this isn't a great offensive line. There's a lot of rebuilding yeah. the Titans offensive line yeah. has to do. So it could be something that that Tony Pollard gets the opportunity. He's paid to be this guy. Maybe he's the Miles Sanders of this draft because this yeah. offensive line's not great. And Ty J Spears just really kind of steps out because he showed last year that he's not Derrick Henry in that sense, but he can still make explosive plays with uh with a bad offensive line. So I I I, I could see why you'd be interested, but I think I'm just gonna kind of stay away. I think yeah, that they're gonna more, they're gonna be more reliant on Will Levis's arm and developing him that way. So I, I would kind of stay away. Yeah. I don't think it's bad advice there at all. Um, how do you feel about Austin Eckler though, Eric heading to Washington, $8.34 million deal. Uh, kind of really sad to honestly see like the fall of Austin Eckler these, these last couple of years. I mean, he was supposed to get a bag and, and it just didn't happen. You know, getting, getting like in the Gus Edwards range rather than the Derrick Henry range. Pretty sad to see for Eckler. Kind of a mixed backfield there too now. Brian Robinson, Chris Rodriguez Jr. I don't know, man. I don't know. I was pretty happy to be taking Austin Eckler where I was getting him uh, in best balls earlier this offseason, right? In that like RB 23, 24 range. I was like, damn, dude, even if he goes somewhere else, he's going to smash. I don't know, man. I don't know. How do you feel? Yeah, you know, I don't I don't know if this is like a, a, a kiss of death for, for Austin Eckler, right? Uh, to your point, you know, he's uh, he's right there in the, like, Zach Moss territory in terms of the size of the contract that he got. So, like, um, you know, not not exactly signaling a ton of, of confidence or intent from the commanders with bringing him in. But 
you know, I, I think a lot of this kind of, you know, uh, it boils down to sort of the, the vibe of this entire new regime, right? Like they, you know, they, they bring in Dan Quinn as kind of like a, a, a safety option, right? Like kind of a <laughs> yeah, fallback yeah, option. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're very clearly going to be bringing in a new quarterback. And I think, you know, the idea of having a veteran player back there who can catch the ball out of the backfield, who's good mm-hmm. in pass pro, like a lot of that, you know, makes makes sense in terms of why they brought him in. But the 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 workload that he was seeing in in Los Angeles is is now a thing of the past, right? Like they they're going to be at least weaving in some Brian Robinson, some some Rodriguez Jr. Like you mentioned, right? You know, maybe maybe not to the point where it's you know it, either of those guys are necessarily viable, but it's it's gonna it's gonna cap Eckler's upside for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Andrea asking, will Eckler be just a third down back? I don't think he'll just be a third down back. Third down plus, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know who will get the starting reps there. It'll be interesting to see kind of who, who wins out there. And I think it kind of depends on the quarterback and how that shakes out there as well. But very interesting, very dicey situation, I think, in general, Hoof. I mean, with Anthony Lynn there, I understand why he went there. But mm-hmm. I'm going to sound like a broken record right now. But this is the worst offensive line in football. Why the hell did he go there? If you're a 27 year old running back trying to show that you are still explosive, he's like 30, isn't he 30? Okay, yeah, a lot older than 27. I'm just yeah. elaborating. If yeah, you're yeah, an yeah. older, if you're an older running back and you are trying to show that you still got it, why the hell would you go to Washington of all places? That makes no sense to me. Um, I for Brian Robinson, like I think Brian Robinson was good because. Antonio Gibson just wasn't it. Uh, I'm a little more worried for him just because Austin Eckler is good. But mm. I think this just hurts both of them. I'm not interested in either now. So, peace. <laughs> I mean, he 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 went there because it was the biggest bag that he could get, right? Yeah, like, yeah probably. He's, he's about to turn 29 this year. He's he's right on the cusp of it. So, like, his, his opportunity to have any earning potential in free agency – is this is kind of the last stop for for that, right? So I, yeah. I promise you if someone was offering him 10, 11, 12 million, that's exactly who he'd be suiting up for. So commanders were the highest bidder, and now now Eckler suits up for them. This is and, an even poorer man's Lions backfield. Of yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. Of the Montgomery. And to, to Andrea's teams. question, I, I think that's how that's how it works, right? Like he's gonna have the lion share of the third down work, and he's probably gonna he's probably gonna alternate the the early down work uh from series to series a lot like detroit did last year uh shout out eric for doing research not making us all spread fake news out here with different ages we appreciate it uh We're gus close. edwards i think gus edwards is very intriguing specifically over the next couple of weeks because i think with jim harbaugh knowing this class he's gonna know what running back is the one he has to take a shot on so i i think if you're drafting gus edwards just know like Blake Corm could be in this in this backfield in two months, or Braylon Allen. We don't really know who who could be in this. Maybe it's Dylan Lobby. Hopefully, I love Dylan Lobby. I would love to see him in our Los Angeles be the new Eckler. But um, so how we feel like like can you can you take the shot on Gus Edwards? He was going like RB forty or so. He's definitely going to shoot up now because of this here, uh, boys. Are you are you in on Eckler? Where are we going? How are we feeling? What are the vibes? Sure. Eric looks like he's foaming at the mouth to answer too, so I'll let him go first. But I, I got something to add for sure. Go Ooh, ahead, Eric. Well, I'll, I'll try to be quick. I think, I think Edwards is fine in a best ball context because he's going to be a lot of what he has been up until this point, right? He reunites with Greg Roman. Um, the Greggy. weeks where he scores touchdown yeah. are are going to be fantastic. God. The weeks where he doesn't are not. <laughs> yeah. uh, spare yourself from trying to figure out which weeks those are. Um, you know, get him in best ball so the system puts him in there automatically. To your to your prior point, I think we are very likely going to be looking at a rookie running back sharing the load or at least being in the mix in this backfield. And so Gus Edwards is going to do what he's always done, which is be a limiting factor and super annoying to other running backs in the, on, on his team, right? But what if it's not a rookie? What if... Oh, hold on, let me cook. Let me cook. All right. Stop. Stop. What, do you what if... Cook? Because if with Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards going there, that showed me they're not going after Blake Corum because the price is going to be way too high. The, you need, the price is way too high. You need to <laughs> cut it on Blake Corum. Mm, the second, it. third round, cut no it. way. It. But the price on a potentially cut candidate with the Titans after the yeah. Titans going after 
after Tony Pollard and having Ty J Spears, they're probably going to cut Hassan Haskins, who Harbaugh was huge on at Michigan. So I could see Hassan Haskins coming in and filling a role in that backfield too. Or even if he doesn't go into that backfield, he could be amazing in that special teams unit. So keep your eyes on Hassan Haskins cutting, getting cut from Tennessee and joining Harbaugh in, in Los Angeles. Just saying. I know. Hassan Haskins for Michigan. Great. Gotta love it. The big man. Uh, looks like we got Steele in the chat saying, Seth, you're the man. Good to see you, Steele. Thanks for tuning in, man. Steel. He's saying he's hanging out with the girl right now. He needs a shout out. Shout out, Steele. We love you, buddy. We, good luck. Good luck. Uh, good luck. Steele's a great guy. Whoever, whoever's with him tonight. Um, all right. We've talked so many running backs, guys. I cannot believe there's still one left to talk about. It's Devin Singletary. Devin Motorman Singletary. This guy cannot be stopped right now. Devin Singletary. No one likes him. No one likes him in the fantasy football community, but the guy just continues to get over 1,000 yards per scrimmage every single season. And, the, hey, the Giants liked him enough. Let's say Quan Walk, who we're going to bring in to supplant him. Devin Singletary, three years, $16 million deal. How are you feeling, Eric? How are you feeling? Your your guy motors out, out of the out of the out of the town of Houston now. Yeah, De- I mean, look, Devin Singletary um, yeah, looked like a very poor man, Saquon Barkley at times for the Texans last year. He right? did so, look so good, dude. Yeah, like you know, ver- versatile runner. They can use him a lot of different ways, right? You know, obviously, like you know that that elusiveness, that peak that peak speed is not anywhere near the level of the the shoes that he's trying to fill but i mean it just it this kind of screams like bridge running back which is a which is a weird concept because you usually don't see teams do that with this position in, in particular but uh you know with with eric gray kind of hanging around yeah maybe eric they gray. go out and kind of speculate later in you know the in like the the day three of the nfl draft and just kind of get some you know a young stable of backs behind him to a learn from him and potentially push him for the for the role but yeah, I mean, look, I think we're looking at a, a situation where he's going to see a good share of this volume, and if if he can keep his form from last year, like he'll be one of those like fringy flex kind of annoying options on in most weeks. Who have you have see, a name for us? I think Eric. I think Eric nailed it when he said "poor man Saquon Barkley" because poor man Saquon Barkley doesn't overcome that bad offensive line, but. Saquon Barkley, the talented, the extremely talented Saquon Barkley is able to overcome that. So I'm out on Devin Singletary, <laughs> but I'm in on Eric Gray. Let me tell you. All right. Ew. Best ball. Best ball, Eric Gray. Last Boom. round. Last round shot. Yeah, he's not even getting drafted right now. So I don't know. I'll have to see what the ADP shakes out for Singletary. I think that will really depend if I'm in or out. He won me a couple chips last year. I shipped him off in a couple of leagues as he was doing good for like a third rounder and a couple of rookie drafts. So I'm excited for that. Let's round it out with some backup running back news at the position. Antonio Gibson to the Patriots, our guy, Steve on, on the website. He really liked that move. I'm not as bold um, to say the least. Chase Edmonds back to Tampa Bay. Dearness Johnson back to Jacksonville. I think what that means is, Hey, Travis Etienne, load him the fuck up. He's getting another big workload here. Same, same with our guy, Rashad white down there in Tampa Bay, DJ Dallas to Arizona. Uh, they got a they got a stable of guys. That's a that's a special team move. Uh, and Nineen Hines probably also a special move team moves uh, going out to Cleveland as well. However, you can cut Pierre Strong in your dynasty leagues. I did that today because I've been holding on to him like a greedy little bastard. So, Ooh. yeah, shout out Pierre Strong. That's tough. <laughs> that's tough. Wide All receivers. Right. This was this was probably the most like crazy year because usually it's like the wide receivers are the ones going out getting a shit ton of money early. No boys, not at all. Gabe Davis sets the market three years, thirty nine million. Um, excited, excited to see what Gabe Davis can do here in Jacksonville. Though uh, on that deal with Trevor Lawrence, how do we feel about it, gentlemen? Um, great blocker, deep shot specialist, and kind of surprising red zone threat, which is where they struggled. So maybe that's like, hey, we need someone who can get his feet down in the fucking end zone that's Gabe Davis I don't know I like it I like it I'm getting the stack already I'm doing some some late round stacks with them already go ahead go ahead oh I can go first um I I think he's a I think he's a better fit in this offense than um than a contract in free agency right like very clearly uh the market had uh had had contracted as Mike Evans and Mike Pittman 
um, and everyone else kind of got snatched up and retained by their existing teams. And so now Jacksonville had to go out and overpay for Gabe Davis to acquire his services. So I think he'll be he'll be additive, right? But you know, all all told, paying forty million dollars for for Gabe Davis is not really what any front office should aspire to. Um, but you know, he's we're, a good we're looking player. at reality. He's a good dude. He's like he's not like a good receiver, but he's a good player. If that makes sense, like he's a hell of a team guy, bro. He's a good at. He's like I mean, probably fine. You can you can get glue guys for for less than twelve million dollars a year. Yeah, that's right? true. Like, that's true. I was um, already got the bag for being that guy last year. So like we'll we'll see we'll see what happens with Calvin Ridley. It's it's largely expected that he'll be out of town, right? So that should open up some you know some targets to to go Gabe Davis's way. But I I don't think that. Uh, a move to Jacksonville is going to cure him of his his kind of boom bust nature. So more of a best ball option than someone I would Did I would rely. Gabe in like Davis go to format. UCF too, right? Gabe Davis UCF guy, right? That's familiar. That sounds yeah. familiar. I, I'll double check that. Who, who your thoughts on Gabe Davis here as we get through the wide receivers? When when Calvin Ridley went there, I thought that he was going to be like a Zay uh, Zay Jones plus, but he obviously outperformed that um, slightly. And and now Gabe Davis going there and I'm overpaying for Gabe Davis. I think that that's exactly who he's going to be. I think that they really are actually really trying to get Ridley back, which is shocking to me that yeah, they're, they that they're willing the to go that second round. Yeah, yeah. But if they wait until after the regular season starts, then it's still a third rounder. So maybe they're waiting. Maybe they're waiting and then they are going to have this three wide receiver set of, of Ridley, uh, Ridley, Davis, and Kirk. But Kirk is probably... Con- I don't know. I'm I'm extremely high on Christian Kirk. I think that he showed that he's actually the wide receiver one of that, and that's why he got paid initially to be that guy. And then they ended up getting Ridley to be a complimentary wide receiver to him. But I I I think that it's going to be tough to make a stab on any one of these guys and say they're going to be solidified wide receiver 32. You know, top whatever guy, top 20. Mm-hmm. But each one at ADP are probably going to give you enough value that they're yeah. that they're worth the draft pick. Yeah, hundred percent. None, none of the Jaguars' pass catchers are going to be league winners. Evan Ingram w- was probably the best bang for your buck last year, just because he stayed healthy all year and and, and you know had over a hundred receptions. But Andrea saying Davis is a better blocker on the run. I agree. And like, if there's one big winner from these signings in, in Jacksonville, it's Travis Etienne, baby. I yeah. just, I just went with robust. I just have been doing some robust drafts lately and uh, loving Travis Etienne in, in the third round there. And then how about, like, who, we need to, Eric, can you look up right now, who is the agent of Darnell Mooney? It's got to be Mulligetta, because Darnell yeah. Mooney gets paid three Get years. Metal. $39 million. $39 million. This guy's had, like, 30 receptions the last two years. He's getting he Gabe lit. Davis money now. <laughs> yeah, and, like, Darnell Mooney was, like, a really good player early on in his career. Like, I loved him as a rookie. I had him in a couple different leagues. I was taking the shot, fourth, fifth round of rookie drafts, scooping him up off the waiver that first year. But there's a limited upside here. And um, I, I think they're definitely still going to attack this position in the draft, you would hope, because it can't. he can't be their number two. He's a number three, 100%. Come on. At least at ADP, you have to be salv- salvinating at – Darnell Mooney, like just with Kirk Cousins, the opportunity that he just makes for his wide receivers, that even if he's the wide receiver three, like if you put Darnell Mooney he's in KJ the KJ Osborne, then he's yeah. KJ okay, Osborne. Yeah. If like, you put him in the KJ Osborne opportunity, that's not a rosterable player. KJ Osborne before Jordan Edison or, or KJ Osborne now, now KJ Osborne with no, with- no way. I think that he's before that you haven't actually drafted someone that if they're drafting someone. They're drafting someone that's a complimentary piece. I think that they really are bringing Darnell Mooney to be that wide receiver two, or even that the the Thielen to be to be the Thielen, and someone else be the Mooney, or someone else be the Osborne. Oh, I if he is the wide receiver two, you have to be somewhat excited. But I don't know. They're definitely going to be going after him um, uh, after some wide receivers, I think here day two, day three, they're going to be shooting their shots and they'll find someone better than Darnell Mooney. Uh, Eric, any final thoughts on our guy Mooney before? Like, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk shit talking, but like, I just thought this was the worst deal of the, 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 the week so far. I mean, this, this kind of underscores the point that I was making with Gabe Davis. I mean, granted, I would rather have Gabe Davis, but um, <laughs> yeah, when, uh, when, Gabe Davis, when supply faster. is low, all of a sudden the, uh, the options available, they see their price tags go up. So 
I didn't think mm-hmm. we were going to see Darnell Mooney get a $40 million contract. Um, you know, he, I mean, he can have one of his better seasons, if not his best season in this, in this system. I don't know if it's a sure thing that they go out and try to get another receiving piece, right? You talk about Drake London being there. You talk about Kyle Pitts as a very athletic. Yeah, that's true. Tight end. Like, good point. That's a good point. You know, he, he could, good he point. could be the third wide receiving option there without them going out and getting another wide out. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Um, some depth wide receiver news here. Uh, looks like Noah Brown back to Houston. Gotta love that. I think it was five million dollars for him. Devin Duvernay, another really good blocker, actually going to Jackson. Devin Duvernay. Yeah, Duvernay. Duvernay. Du- Duvernay can do some different stuff as well. And Devontae Parker to the Eagles. Shout out Devontae Parker. That's a nice little like. That's a nice little spot. Can't for keep getting away with this. How does he keep getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Devonte, he's another one. He's got Mulgetta or so, someone as an agent. I don't know. Maybe it's who it was who, Mulgetta who, for for Mooney too. Oh, was it really Mulgetta? Yeah. Yes, I knew it. I knew. Just it. I just don't pay. get how they didn't learn after Julio Jones. Like, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Like, like the SpongeBob GIF. I mean, they paid for Zach Pascal last year. Like, that's where they kind of have been. Like, yeah, they the, the right. Eagles, the Eagles like to take shots on these big, bigger bodied wide receivers. Um, you, you know, they need depth there, so I don't blame it. Jalen Rager, he remains in New England. He signs back with them. Um, quickly, some tight end news. Dalton Schultz re-ups in, in Houston three years, $36 million. This kind of writes the ship for, for Brevin Jordan. If you had any hope for him in dynasty leagues, I was taking the shot like last round of best balls. I think we can move on from Brevin Jordan. Um, you know, maybe a waiver wire pickup if Schultz goes down, but Eric, you gotta like Schultz as a back end tight end one after after seeing what he did last year with our guy CJ Stroud. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it it being a three year contract, you know, really really tells you all that you need to know, right? He's going to continue to be that uh, that release valve for CJ Stroud. We fully expect this offense to be as electric as it was last year because they've spent all of their war chest of of cap space on yeah. retaining the guys they had from last year, largely. So. Uh, should should see them run it back. Should be a tight end one season for Dalton Schultz again. Danell Hunter on the other side of the ball too that they got. That right. yeah, Texans are looking nice again. Dalton Schultz is a huge reason why I'm so big on Joe Mixon this year. With him with him blocking and being a part of that offense again great, and re upping for the three yeah three years. Blocker. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Other tight end news uh, t- to round out the discussion. Noah Fant back in Seattle. Will Disley to the Chargers. Col- Colby Parkinson to the Rams. Colby Parkinson got a fucking bag, a big bag. Gerald Everett to the Bears. Mike Kosicki to the Bengals. Irv Smith Jr., Big Irv to the Kansas City Chiefs. He's going ring chasing. Uh, and then Charlie Warner uh, to the Falcons. Eric, if there is there one name on that list that you're like, that could be fantasy relevant or no? Uh, not really. No. Um, will Disley leaving Seattle and kind of creating some space for Noah Fant who stays in Seattle? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, potentially there's, there's some interest there. Um, you know, all these guys are, are really dart throws. Stop freaking out about Mike Kosecki going to places. Uh, more people than I would like to admit were reacting to that in a positive way. I don't think that's really going to be a needle mover for Cincinnati, but yeah, all just kind of kind of afterthoughts, you know, more more speculative uh, moves than anything else. There's a lot. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, bud. Go ahead. There's people out there that are excited about Mike Kosecki going to Cincinnati. Are you one of those people? I am. Yeah, I am. You are one of those people. Were you also excited? I I... Were you also excited about Austin Hooper going to the Raiders? No, because when they go out and Bre- and Brock Bowers falls to them. And they actually get a young, dynamic tight end. No one's even going to remember that Mike Gusecki is going to be a part of that tight end room. So that's my bet: is that Mike Gusecki is going to be a mentor, and he's not actually going to be fantasy relevant. But there are some people out there that are hyping up Mike Gusecki, so I think he's a bigger name on this list than people. Uh, I mean, than your your list suggests. I don't get what the Bengals are doing. They just re up Drew Sample for like three more years too. He's a good special teamers and a and a good blocker, but they gave him three years. They gave him a nice little bag. They still got Tanner Hudson who had a nice little breakout down the stretch as well. So kind of convoluted, but I like Mike Kosicki. I think he's high upside guy. And if we if we don't see Tyler Boyd back, they might need a third a third option there. So keep Mike Kosicki in mind. Keep him in what mind. About Tanner Hudson. 
I like Tanner Hudson, but I like Mike Kosicki more. I like Mike Kosicki more. Um, guys, let's go ahead. Let's round out the show here with a little bit of good news for the people. Also, I want to shout out the IBT family for riding with us tonight. It's been a fun episode breaking down everything that free agency was. And holy shit, was that a lot. Um, but thank you guys so much for, for, for bearing with us through it all, asking questions, giving us your feedback as well. Um, if, if we can answer any more questions, let us know here. We're going to round it out with some good news, bring you some feel-good headlines from around the sports, entertainment, science, Whatever worlds we got going on right now. Um, Hoop, I'm going to let you crack things open, my man. What is the good news of the week coming from our QB1? Uh, this could be good news. This could be great news. This could be breaking news. This could be just news in general. I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> potentially, we have a former three, four-time MVP. How many MVPs does this man have? Aaron Rodgers, that bad man as a potential VP candidate with RFK. Now, I ain't going to be all political. I ain't going to speak on any candidate. That's for you all to decide on who yeah, you're going to sure. vote for or whatever. Sure, surely. But but I think it is an interesting thing that yeah. that even someone with Aaron Rodgers' stature, that he could, be, uh, he could be put in the limelight to be a VP candidate. And I think it would be absolutely hilarious for late night comics because of the jimmy kimmel aaron Rodgers thing so imagine if he had to take shots at the vp oh the, eric it, it doesn't make much sense like how he could actually do this like in the midst of an nfl season why he would want to get involved with that being said i'm kind of for it it kind of sounds like a fun little journey it kind of reminds me of a, a you know maybe five, 10 years ago when other celebs were thinking about jumping in the race. Like we were hearing Kanye out there. We were hearing the rock. We were hearing, uh, we were hearing a bunch of them never happened. Is a Raj on the ballot here? You think? Uh, I don't know if it happens this go round. Um, look, you're, you love this. If you are, uh, if you are a member of team chaos, um, <laughs> not surprising at all, right? Like Aaron Rodgers, egomaniac would absolutely love the opportunity to have, tens of millions of people go out and potentially cast a ballot in favor of him would certainly love to have the the power that comes along with that office. Right. So not necessarily surprising that he would be interested in that. And also just like the state of American politics, celebrity yeah. goes a long way, right? Yeah. You talked about like Kanye and the rock kind of getting in the mix there. Uh, a guy who's mainly known for being a celebrity found his way into that office. And there are plenty of other former celebrities and, familiar names that can kind of parlay that into a seat so wouldn't be completely out of the realm of possibility for aaron Rodgers to join those ranks yeah man i'll just you know and who i think you said it best like we're not a political place we are very much even keeled down the line that is how i live my life i am a registered independent i can promise you that um i'll just say my vote's up for grabs my vote's up for grabs right now so if <laughs> if rfk jr and, and a rod can put something together <laughs> i might be i might be taking a swing at that might be taking a look might be taking a little bit of a look so we'll we'll see what happens out there uh in those political <laughs> let us know in the chat let us know in the chat would you take a <laughs> A swing at a Are you Rod voting on an Aaron Rodgers? I thought, ticket, I thought yeah. you were. I thought you were about to say like, "Let us know in the chat who should we vote for? Who should be the oh, next president?" <laughs> this crowdsource this like, thing. I'd be like, "What kind of clickbait shit is this? <laughs> what kind of oh. clickbait is this?" All right, <laughs> all right. Let's move to the next headline <laughs> of the week. Luke Combs takes a stand for Panthers fans every. Where shout out to our guy Luke Combs. Here's a tweet. Let's pull it up, folks. At Panthers, what are we doing? No first round picks for McCaffrey a few years back, and now none for Burns. Are we just firebombing the whole team at this point, or what? I usually don't even comment on these kind of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. And I, I love the comments. Uh, RG3, even Luke Combs is tired of the Panthers' hurricanes like decisions. Lucas Glover getting in on the action and uh, Ken Cook saying at least Cole Beer never broke his heart. How about it, Oof? Long neck eyes, cold beer never, never broke my heart. heart. I love like it. Like a man. diamond rings of football oh. teams that tore this boy oh, apart. apart. 
I got it, man. There you got go. Got that. Yeah. 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 So I like the neighbors. I like Luke. Con- like usually this is feel good headlines and this is a little bit of clickbait internet conversation going on here. But I will say like shout out to Luke Combs for taking a stand, man. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of country singers that love the Carolina Panthers. Eric church is another one. And God damn, this team is hard to root for. They could have got two first rounders for Brian Burns like a year or two ago. What are they doing here, Eric? This is bullshit, my friend. Yeah, we talk about uh, poverty franchises doing this type of shit all the time. Um, The least surprising news ever is that the Panthers don't know how to manage their salary cap or their personnel or how to make logical decisions. So, um, you know, maybe maybe Luke Combs getting in the mix will... Uh, will you know stir the pot enough for there to to be some change? But uh, yeah, like you you look down, you know, even just the the recent history. Scott, shout out Scott Barrett. Uh, I, I think he uh, he's the one who I saw that that accumulated all this. Sent out the one hundred and one essentially Caleb Williams this year, Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, the a one year rental of Brian Burns, uh, three firsts and a second round pick, and in turn in return they got. That one year rental, they got Bryce Young, two fifths, a fourth, and a third. Right, like just just letting uh, all this capital, you know, just just slide between their fingers. It's it's wild to think how mismanaged they've they they've been in that front office. That's on. I have a very I have a very easy answer for Luke Combs. Yeah, they got their reasons, <laughs> just like you. When you walk right out of my life when you didn't didn't have have to. to. That's why. They got their reasons. They got their reasons for sure. Tyler's saying he's dying right now with the Luke Combs conversation. Yeah, man, be better. And, like, we got Dan Morgan up in here now, and everyone's like, yo, Dan Morgan's the guy. He doesn't fucking blink. He doesn't take his fucking eyes off the the, the ball right now. (laughs) Holy shit. Holy shit. It's going to be a shit show in Carolina this, this year, folks. Um, buckle up. Buckle up. Because if I had to place money on it right now, I'd say Panthers own the uh, – I, I don't even know if they own their next pick, but I think they're going to be the first first overall pick in 2025. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. You can totally see it. That's what Deontay Johnson gets for dropping all those balls, being an asshole too. Go, go enjoy Dan Morgan and getting shit on by Luke Combs. That's all we have to say here about that. Um, Eric, please round us out, my friend. Give us give us some feel good. Feel good. Feel good. We need to be lifted. We get higher. I don't, I don't know if this, is, if this is feel good news to anyone other than maybe me. Uh, parthenogenesis is the ability for an animal to recreate or to procreate without a partner. Um, and recently... It was discovered that a stingray in captivity did just that. So now stingrays, wow. sharks, some some crocodile species have all shown the ability to do this. Um, it's it's one of the most baffling uh, things in the in the biologic world. You know, there's not a whole lot of answers there. But the reason why it makes me smile is this is a key plot point to the plot of Jurassic Park. I feel like this stingray <laughs> replicating on its own us trying to bring woolly mammoths back from from the from the, the frozen <laughs> ice like we're we're just right on the precipice of Jurassic World being a reality and that sounds fun right I, I think I think team chaos would be totally here for some dinosaurs roaming the earth again did you, you see where I stick I think if I stick my leg in it that it'll heal my Achilles <laughs> maybe did you, you see where this happened out? you see where this happened Charlotte Charlotte Win for win for I, the Carolina. Let's I, go, baby. I think I think Charlotte's the name of the Stingray. Wanted to give credit uh, where it was due for this amazing uh, feat. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I was gonna shout out David Tepper. I thought maybe David Tepper was in on this right now. Getting he it done totally there would for this thing race. <laughs> we appreciate David Tepper. Like, we for, appreciate forget all the draft capital we've lost. Check out this Stingray. <laughs> hey, Jim Ursay was big with that whale. Yeah. So maybe <laughs> yeah, right. He's big with the Stingray. You know what I mean. We go there. We go. No, shout, good spot here. Shout out to the stingrays potentially uh, giving birth on their own. Man, who needs uh, who needs a, a male counterpart? I'm sure. I'm who sure. needs a man nowadays? Shout out, right? Uh, Do your own thing, Charlotte. But we just went. We just went far thing. left field. Yeah, we, Eric took us far left field a little My bit God. with that one. But hey, that's all right. 
Um, all right, guys. Well, we're going to round out the show. We went way over. We, we were trying to keep this between 60, 75 minutes. It was about you know 90 this week, but a lot of shit moving, a lot of shit popping off in the NFL scene. Thank you guys so much for riding with us. If you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you're a returning audience member, thank you guys for always riding with us. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this type of content. Come check out the website, inbetweenmedia.com. We've got a bunch of new fancy football articles out there, some entertainment stuff, and all the NASCAR and PGA content you need as well for your week. So, uh, Eric, who, thank you guys so much. This is awesome, guys. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys. It's been crazy. Man, last you're few always days. a blast. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, it's always fun to do it with you guys and everyone we have rocking here with at the IBT family. So appreciate everyone. Have a great rest of your week and uh, just kick it, man. Until next time, keep in between. Thank you.